hello hello everyone i hope you're all doing really well and ready for some more national five chemistry today we're going to be having a look at combustion reactions and we want to make sure we get through the following things today we want to understand fully what a combustion reaction is what that word combustion means we want to make sure we know what the products of combustion are and we also want to be able to write out and balance combustion equations here is our definition of a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction is when we exothermically react a substance with oxygen. And if you want to kind of remember that in a, in a simpler way, a combustion reaction simply means that we are burning something. And that'll be a word that we're, I'm sure, a lot more familiar with. And it makes sense because exothermic, if you remember from Unit 1 National Fives, Exothermic means kind of to release heat to the environment, and that's exactly what we're doing when we're combusting something or burning it. All we're doing is just reacting the substance with oxygen to produce heat. And there's two different types of combustion reaction that we need to be aware of. Similar names, the first type, complete combustion, the second type, incomplete combustion. Let's address the first one. Complete combustion, I suppose the clue is in the name, it means that we've completely combusted whatever substance that we're burning. Now in order to do that, we need to make sure that we have a plentiful supply of oxygen. Make sure there's lots and lots of oxygen in the environment whenever we're doing this kind of combustion reaction in order to completely combust something. Incomplete combustion is just really the opposite of that. We're trying to combust a substance, but the combustion reaction will be incomplete because there isn't enough oxygen or there is a limited supply of oxygen. So those are two definitions that we need to be aware of and know the difference between complete combustion and incomplete combustion. And to carry on from that now, we also need to know the products of combustion reactions and specifically when we're combusting hydrocarbons and other homologous series like the al like alcohols that we've looked at um, in the past. So if we look um, first of all at complete combustion when we've got a plentiful supply of oxygen, loads and loads of oxygen, what will be our two products in this reaction? Well we've got a hydrocarbon, I'm reacting it with oxygen that's all the information I need to be able to say, well, this is probably going to be some sort of combustion reaction. And if it's complete combustion, my two products are always the same. No matter what hydrocarbon I burn, I will always get carbon dioxide and water produced. Now, that kind of makes sense if we really think about what's happening in this reaction. Our hydrocarbon is made up of carbon and hydrogen, and I'm reacting it with oxygen. If I go to the product side, I've just taken that carbon there, reacted it with oxygen and produced carbon dioxide. The hydrocarbon is also made up of hydrogen atoms. There's the hydrogen, reacted with oxygen to produce water. For incomplete combustion, remember that's when we have not a plentiful supply, we have a limited supply of oxygen. Complete combustion, complete combustion was when we had a plentiful supply of oxygen. Simply put, there just wouldn't be enough oxygen in the reaction to produce carbon dioxide, and instead we would produce carbon monoxide with a single oxygen, and we would also get some water produced in this reaction as well. So complete combustion, we're getting carbon dioxide, and an incomplete combustion, there's just not enough oxygen there, there's a limited supply and the reaction is forced to make the quite dangerous and toxic gas carbon monoxide. Okay, now let's bring everything together and look at a kind of couple of examples and what we'd be expected to do. We'd be expected to be able to complete this um, chemical equation and then to balance it as well. So what we've got here at the start of the um, equation, we've got a hydrocarbon. This is the hydrocarbon ethane. I'm reacting it with oxygen. It must be a combustion reaction. And my products for complete combustion are carbon dioxide 
and water, CO2 and H2O. Now, again, if we think back to our unit one chemistry, there's something not quite right about this equation. We know that we need to have the same types and numbers of atoms on both sides of an equation. Now, I don't have that. I've got two carbons on this side, only one carbon here, and six hydrogens, only two hydrogens, and two oxygens and three oxygens. So it's not balanced. So how I recommend balancing these equations in any combustion reaction um, is to balance them in a particular order. Make sure we're balancing first the carbons, then the hydrogens, and lastly the oxygens. Now the reason for that is the oxygen is by itself here in this reaction, and it'll be pretty easy to balance at the end. So we'll leave that for the very end and do the carbons and hydrogens first. Make this little table just to make our lives a lot easier and count up the number of carbon atoms on both sides, two on this side, one on this side, hydrogens six and two, and then oxygens two and there's three here, two from the CO2 and one from the water. Now, as we can see, this is definitely not balanced, so let's balance it. First, we're going to start with our carbons. I've got two carbons on the left hand side, only one on the right hand side, so I'm going to want to put a large two in front of the CO2 molecule. That will change the number of carbons down here to two, and I've balanced it. I've got the same on both sides now. Hydrogens, six hydrogens here, two hydrogens here. I'm going to want to put a large three and times the water molecule through by three to make sure that I've now got six hydrogens on both sides. Six here, three times two is six there as well. Now the oxygens, I've not changed anything on this side, so I've still got two oxygens on my reactant side, but on my product side, I'm going to have to look at this number three again because it's not quite right. I've got two times two is four, plus another three times one as a total of seven oxygens on my product side now. So two times two for four, and then three from the H2O is seven. Over here, I have got just O2. Now, this is a um, something that you might not have learnt when you were balancing chemical reactions in unit one. But whenever we've got a diatomic molecule like oxygen or hydrogen, just with these types of molecules, what we're actually allowed to do is not only put a large number in front of them, like two or three or four, but I can also put in a half fraction as well. So if I put in, just for um, example's sake, not to balance this equation, if I put in a half in front of this O2, which I'm allowed to do, then instead of having two oxygens on this side, I've got half a two, which would be one. Now, that's not going to help me balance it right now, but you'll see why it'll help in just a second. What I would not be allowed to do is to put a half in front of anything else. I can only put halves in front of oxygens. You can't put it in front of um, any other molecules in these balancing equations. So just do it for the O2s. So why is that going to help me? Well, if I times two by three and a half, I have now got not two oxygens on this side, I've now got seven. Three times two is seven, and I've got seven oxygens on both sides. Now everything is balanced. All my atoms are the same numbers on both sides, and that's what we'd be expected to be able to do with these combustion reactions. Okay, let's look at a slightly trickier one. They've not um, given us any help this time. They've just given us a, a question and we just be expected to use our knowledge of chemistry here really to figure out how to write in this um, chemical equation. They're telling us that we are wanting to write a complete combustion reaction. So I know I'm going to be reacting something with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. What I'm reacting uh, with the oxygen is butan-2-ol. Now I need to get the correct molecular or chemical formula for butan-2-ol. So I'm just going to do a little bit of working at the side. I know that but is four carbons. I know that this an-2-ol tells me it is an alcohol with a hydroxyl group, an OH group, on the second carbon. 
and I also know that alcohols are then going to be fully saturated with hydrogens. So I'm just doing a little bit of work and drawing out the full structure for butan 2 all and that will allow me to get the correct chemical formula. So 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hydrogens and an OH as well. So that's what I'm going to be combusting, this butan 2 all. So let's write it out here, CH4 H9 OH combustion reaction. I'm going to be reacting it with oxygen O2 to produce my two products for complete combustion carbon dioxide and water. Put the line over there. Now, normal steps line down the middle, number of carbons on both sides, hydrogens on both sides, and oxygens on both sides. And please remember to balance these combustion reactions in this order, carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. So I've got four carbons here, one carbon on my right hand side. Left hand side, total of 10 hydrogens, there's nine plus one is 10. Oxygens, one oxygen plus another two is three oxygens. Same on this side for my um, hydrogens, two hydrogens from the water and three oxygens from my carbon dioxide and water. Now, let's have a look at balancing this equation. I have got four carbons here and only one here. I'm going to need to put a four in front of the CO2 and that gives me now four carbons on both sides. Great, I've balanced the carbons. Next step, let's do the hydrogens. Ten hydrogens here, only two hydrogens on this side. I'm going to have to put a five in front of the H2O. Now I've got 10 hydrogens on both sides and the last step is to do my oxygens. Remember that number 3 is going to change now because I've put in the other number so let's just score that out and see what it's actually at. I've got 4 times 2 is 8 plus 5 is 13. Now let's um, think for a second about um, what we did in the last example where I times this O2 by a half and just to kind of refresh ourselves I'm allowed to times O2 by a half but nothing else, nothing else can be times by a half. So if I put in six and a half, six and a half times two is 13. Okay perfect that looks like I've balanced it but don't forget about this oxygen over here from my butan 2 all. So if I made, that, made this to be six and a half that would be 13 from the O2 here, plus another O would be 14 in total. It wouldn't be balanced. So I don't actually have to use a half this time. I can just times this oxygen by 6, this O2 by 6, which is 12, plus another oxygen from the um, butanol, and that gives me 13 oxygens on both sides, and now everything is correctly balanced.